Yes. Thank you, my dear. Appreciate it. Sorry about that. It's trying to mirroring. And please mute yourselves. Thank you. Um, this session is going to be available. This main room will be recorded. Our breakout sessions today will not be recorded. I'll explain that more in a moment. Um, but I'd like to get started. Uh, we are so excited um, for this session about what fans want, data-driven decisions. Um, some of our speakers joining us today, and let me put myself in gallery. Are we seeing the speakers on screen at the moment? No. Um, Tressa, I'm not seeing the speakers. I'm so close. I'm just trying to mute people oh, okay. who are not no, muted. Don't worry. You're no. wonderful. You're great. I apologize. Um, so I, I'll just give the overview in short. In a brief moment, you'll see our speakers on screen. This is Michelle Conceison speaking, if you want to find me in the, in the gallery. There we go. Here we come. Um, and I may be able to, I'm not able to pin myself. Um, okay, so our agenda today is we'll have a 30 minute panel and followed by breakout sessions, which will go into different rooms with speakers and we'll reunite. Some of our speakers were kind enough to join us for a webinar over the summer to talk about change in consumption data that we were seeing in the marketplace, especially given uh, so many people staying at home and coping with pandemic conditions. You can still view that conversation and a host of other educational content at folk.org slash resources slash webinars. I'm gonna put that in the chat right now um, in case anyone needs to grab that for later. There is some great educational content there. And after that session, um, honestly, this panel, this workshop at Folk Unlocked is the first thing that was planned for this conference because literally, because after that session, uh, we all, um, the speakers and myself um, moderating, felt that there was so much more to talk about. And um, I'm grateful to the speakers who spoke before, who agreed to come back during the session and have this workshop where people could get in groups and ask questions and go deeper. So here's how this session will work. This is a gathering of industry professionals who are capable of speaking on different slices of data that are available to artists, songwriters, and their team data that can help us all make smart decisions. We'll start with a panel discussion, then we'll um, meet meeting participants. Will, you will be able to choose a breakout session to join um, yourself and each of those sessions will be facilitated by a panelist. We'll make it clear which, which who's going where for that. Charlton, help us out. If, if you only get to tell folks here one piece of advice about Spotify data, what would that be? I would say my biggest piece of advice is to uh, first figure out what you want to measure before you start looking at what you can measure, uh, because a lot of the data, it's just going to be a proxy for really what you're seeing. Like, there's nothing that's going to tell you, like, how much your fans actually love you. But what we can tell you is how much they're coming to your profile, how much they're engaging with your content, how much they're sharing it. Um, and it's important for you to understand, like, where are the gaps between the metrics you actually have at your fingertips and the things that you actually want to know um, so that you can you know, be smart about, about what you have access to and not make decisions uh, based on things that you, you, that you don't actually uh, have an ability to get a read on. That's such good advice because so often, like we're, we're able to pull the reports we're able to pull. And so we, we basically take what, some, what, what a platform tells us is important when we pull a report, yep. we're like, okay, this must be important because it's in a report. I love this notion of like come up with your learning agenda, understand what you what you want to know um, before pulling. 100. I'm 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 going to continue to in, in, introduce all the speakers, uh -huh. but I'm going to also say like y'all put a pin in it if if you want to come back to any of these topics. I imagine we will. Um, next we have Ayapa Badanda. Ayapa, welcome. Ayapa wears several hats at Concord, working on releases from multiple record labels in the Concord family, including Rounder, which is how I get to work with Ayapa sometimes. Um, as a senior director, he works in radio and video promotion and tour promotion. So it's interesting. Um, so you're interpreting data from views and follows to ads and spins and chart positions and considering these elements um, from a record label perspective. You also, and we're grateful to you for being involved in the task force that helped 
um, with some of the things that have gone on with the folk radio chart. Um, welcome, Ayapa. What would you say the most important thing is when working with data? Uh, well, thanks. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks for having us. And thanks, everybody, for your time being here. Um, in terms of the most important thing, I would say context is most important. I love data. I love to embrace it and hold it and think about why it's right. I also like to think about why is this data that I'm looking at wrong? What is it that's missing? What is it that uh, not being captured? What can it be included that disrupts the information that I'm looking at? So context is always key, especially from an artist's perspective. You wanna be thinking, how does this include what I'm doing, but also be keeping in mind, how does what I do not fit in the data and how do I find a way to quantify that so that I know what I'm able to accomplish on a daily basis. I feel like I've just, in the, in the first three answers, I could have saved myself hours of trouble. So this is great, <laughs> this is great. This is great advice for a manager right here. Um, Next, I'd like to turn uh, to Robert Knotts. Robert is Vice President of D Digital Strategy at 30 Tigers. 30 Tigers is such a unique business, a distributor that operates much like a label in a lot of ways. And in, um, in, my, in my own experience, I'm always blown away by the 30 Tigers team, offering distribution and label services to artists operating their own labels, all operating on a global scale. Um, no pressure or anything, Robert, as I introduce you. Uh, welcome. What, what's your one tip for folks? Well, thank you. Yeah, and again, it's really good to see everybody. Uh, a lot of friends here. I guess, again, those first three answers knocked it out of the park. But um, one thing I like to keep in mind when approaching data, especially from a holistic view with as much data as we can all be inundated with on a given day, is finding a benchmark or a barometer of a success when comparing data. You know, I think a number in itself doesn't really serve a purpose if there's really nothing that you're striving for or that you, if you're not bringing any sort of uh, benchmark to that, to the data set that you're interpreting, uh, much like Ayapa mentioned, you know, context is king. So, um, you know, keeping that in mind, I think will help in all, all strategy. Well, last but not least, Scott, thanks for being patient. Here we come. Uh, Scott Musgrave is the head of US radio at Nielsen Music, MRC Data. Um, you know, poor Scott has been putting up with a million questions for me as a data lover. Like I, you know, when I saw the research that Nielsen came out with, and I think it was five or six waves over um, last spring into the summer of really sharing, I mean, there were not a lot of insights at that time of what was going on during the pandemic. What were people doing in terms of data consumption? Um, and, and you certainly, your organization put out some great data then and you poor thing, I just was like, I need to know more. Um, but I know, you've, I know you've asked the research team to pull some data for today. Um, I want you to give your one tip um, and maybe save that data for the first question I have for, for the whole group, um, if you like. But, but what would be your one tip? Um, and you can come from any perspective, whether that's research, or I know you're, you're really well versed in radio and other data that, that y'all provide. So what would be your one tip for folkies? Oh, and you're muted, my friend. I listened earlier to mute, but not to unmute. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think the, we're in a unique perspective with in, in the confusion there with us is that we were known for many years as Nielsen Music. We were sold and, and merged with uh, the team under Bill, uh, with Billboard at MRC Data, more recently with Penske. So we've been kind of a moving target of our name, but MRC Data is kind of the name for right now, but a lot of stuff still is called Nielsen. But um, MRC Data, uh, is in a unique position because we are the aggregator of a lot of data from the DSPs, from radio airplay, from uh, cons all consumption data, from sales data, and we kind of bring all the pieces together. And some of that's available, you know, or easily available for artists, you know, through other companies who buy it, you know, but, and sometimes it's not always easy for artists to get like small chunks of it, which is, is sometimes challenging just in terms of the way we're structured. And that's something we're working on trying to make it easier for people to get access to data in that in that form. But I think my advice would be to, to take advantage of um, the companies that you work with who do have full access to all of this aggregated data. Uh, and then the direct pieces from the DSPs, from the Spotify's the world who do a great job with things like, 
you know, from the artist data that they provide uh, directly to artists, I think is, I mean, is, is just huge. And be able to look at all those different pieces as available and then take advantage of things like we have as some of the things as a preview of what I'm gonna talk about in, in a little bit in my breakout is we do a survey every year of Music 360, which looks at music fans. And we're, I'm pulled a bunch of data about folk music fans, which I'm gonna to provide to this group. And it's, it's some really great insights about you know, where do folk music fans go? You know, social media, where do folk music fans spend their time? You know, how do they feel about live music in, in, in the COVID world? Things like that. So without going on and on, I mean, those are some of my kind of initial tips and, and a preview of what I'm gonna talk about and, and, and share with everybody and collaboratively in the, uh, in the breakout session. Yeah, I think, I think one of the things you're drawing on too, it kind of brings up for me what Ayapa was talking about as well of like, see yourself in the data and then see how you're different also that, that I think a lot of times we don't always look at mainstream music industry data sources because we think, oh, that's not us. Right. But, you know, one of the, like the data points about live streaming was really interesting to me in the research y'all were doing because it was about how many people said they would go to a live stream and how many people actually went to live streams and exactly. then I was thinking about it in the con then contextualizing it in folk of what I'm seeing in our own experience. It's interesting to look at that comparison. Um, let's let's get into our first questions because I think this is kind of a segue for that. And this goes to anyone who would like to speak. Um, you know, in terms of recent consumption, when we talk about what people want now, like what do our fans want now, a lot of us are talking about consumption data. Um, what music consumption patterns and changes in listening and purchasing behavior have y'all observed in recent months, whether or not you think that that is related to the pandemic? So it could be pandemic specific, what you're seeing, or in general, what are you seeing in terms of trends? Uh, before we answer, um, I'd love to hear from Charles too. Can we? Hey, Michelle. Charles. Charles. <laughs> Charles. Like, I think I, I think you were supposed to be first. I think that's what just happened to me. I'm so sorry. Let me- I think it's cool because the chat is oh, lighting up. They're like- No, oh, that's just rude. That's just rude. Okay, so Charles, here's your intro. Charles is- And answer that question. Who don't, for those of you who don't know Charles, Charles is actually um, one of the most impressive um, online communicators about data on an ongoing day-to-day -day basis. At any time during the day, if you're in a circle with Charles, he will be educating on all of the ways. And, and Charles, in a, in a lot of ways, what I appreciate about the perspective you bring is how things interact with each other. So often um, you're talking about how different platforms relate to one another. Um, so I apologize, Charles, you are oh, a... Did, did. <laughs> uh, and Ayapa, thank you. I, I don't know how that happened. I do, and I don't. So Charles, first of all, what is your tip? What is yeah, your tip? First of all, in terms of data, we have two Indians on this panel, so the data is just way skewed this morning. Um, but it's cool. Um, <laughs> I, you know, for me, I think the data thing. I, I think everybody has mentioned um, everything that's pretty much relevant. For me, I think um, the data is great. You know, but the, the question is, what are you measuring, and is it actionable? But more importantly, um, it, you, you need to be careful with data because uh, data can only approximate or be a proxy for connection and emotion. Um, because I'm sure we all on this panel, especially, and, and even out in the audience, we all know of cases where the data told us things that were completely, you know, um, opposite of what real life is. So if you if you go back and look at um, you know, things like uh, uh, Billie Eilish, some of the early data on her was not favorable. And she is now, you know, probably the, the, the biggest artist on the planet in terms of mainstream pop. And there's countless examples of, you know, what uh, data does or doesn't do. But I think like some of the earlier panels, uh, early panels said, uh, context is important understand what you're looking at. And honestly, where the rubber meets the road is, if your artist in a live situation can or cannot connect, that's gonna, in my mind, trump anything else that data tells you or doesn't tell you. 
Charlton, can I, um, I'm sorry. I mean, Charles, can I jump off of a, what you've just said and ask you a question? Like now that I've failed to introduce you, can I put you on the hot seat with a question that's not in our, sure. in our predetermined questions? Because I think something that you're talking about in terms of knowing what you're looking at and not looking at and something that I really appreciate when I'm like on a daily basis learning from you <laughs> in social media conversations about data. Um, often it's like, how do I know, how do, who do I listen to in terms of advice? Like, like I, I, that like begs the question, we're all here giving advice and we're like, who should you listen to? But I think there's at times moments where when people are trying to, as a group, try to understand what's happening in data, there can be moments where you don't know who to believe. Like you don't know how to know what's, what's true. Or, you know, someone says, this is the way a certain platform works. Um, who do you look to? Or how do you, how do you, how do you kind of interpret whether or not it's accurate? What's, what, what is happening? Yeah. Let the, let the people tell you and let the artists guide you. You know, I think those are two really important things. I'll give you a very specific example. About a year ago at MTSU, when I was adjunct teaching um, this thing called um, launch, um, rather and match records. Um, one of the artists in that sort of cohort was a young woman named Sarah Case. Um, and Sarah, um, at the time that match was working with her, no one knew who she was. And, you know, she had just, uh, we had, she and I had met a few months before in another uh, MTSU course um, that was run by Reed Chipman and Mark Montgomery and Ernest Chapman. Um, and, um, and she had heard me speak and she heard me say something about playlists and other marketing strategies. So she went off and she said, I like that idea. I'm going to go build my fan base. And at the time, I didn't know what she meant. And what she had done was she had gone off and built an audience on TikTok for like six months. And by the time she came back to match, she had the beginnings or the kindling of something uh, on TikTok. Now, up to that point, I was very skeptical about TikTok because I thought TikTok was a specific kind of thing. And, and most of you, I think, know what I mean when I say that. It's a very kind of, you know, kitschy, gimmicky kind of platform. No real artists live there. It's not conducive to your career as an artist or whatever. But what Sarah taught me was that TikTok, in TikTok, you can find your niche. You can build your audience. And the most important thing about TikTok is that um, you can find your own tribe. It doesn't have to be that kitschy, gimmicky, dancey kind of maybe even sometimes gross kind of thing you see on the platform. She is, was a very different type of person than what I had seen on TikTok up to that point. And long story short, her entire presence on TikTok helped her build her career. And she's now signed to Atlantic. She's, I think, in top three of, you know, Spotify, uh, today's top hits. She's on the viral charts. Every release is on New Music Friday. But it wouldn't have happened if the audience didn't tell you that. And if she didn't have the confidence and the belief that she could create her space in that platform. You know? So I think let the audience tell you and let the audience guide you. It's such an important thing because so often um, we all kind of flock toward what people have done that works when so often it's the thing that hasn't been done yet that's going to work, yeah. right? That's yeah. going to yeah. break through. So this first question, what, what music consumption trends, I'll put it in the chat too, just so um, in case that's helpful. What music consumption trends, patterns, changes, what have you all seen in recent months over the last year, whether you think that's related to pandemic or not? Uh, one thing that I've noticed is uh, listeners are able to engage in a little bit more long form content than before, where if you're driving and you need something just to get you across your commute, that's one thing. But now folks being at home, um, they're willing to engage in more podcasts and more long form, whether it's documentaries, uh, whether it's full albums and listening to context again, kind of in a different way. Um, and that's been interesting uh, because 
now artists have a chance to tell the stories of the songs and the making of, and then there's an ability to be able to, kind of what Charles was saying, finding your tribe and your audience. It's not just about the song. It's also about, well, how did that song come to be? And people who want to take a deep dive into who you are and what you're all about have that opportunity. And folks who are still kind of doing surface stuff and going, um, trying to go wide rather than deep, there's that ability too. So I would say if you're finding that some of your audience is interested in going deep, then take advantage of that, especially right now, because um, that is the lifelong fan you're going to be garnering and that you're going to have for the rest of your career. So even if it might not be millions of people, um, the quality is over quantity is always the, the way to go. And this is an opportunity to get some quality fans and followers. Other thoughts? It's really helpful. I hadn't thought about it that I'm like managing artists and I'm living that. And you've just said something that felt really true to me. Charlton. I can say some of the things that we've seen at Spotify, just like in generally, in, in general, excuse me, <laughs> about how, how listening has changed. It's something um, I, I recall like last year when, um, you know, the pandemic first became a reality and everyone, ev everything changed. We were really uh, shocked. Artists were delaying releases. They were, uh, people were moving up releases and, and we just didn't know what was happening. But now we've sort of started to see um, there were some like big changes and like obviously we've lost like commuting as a as like a time for people to listen but in general we're actually seeing people are listening more um, like in, in in fact and like we're seeing both people that are on the platform are spending more time listening and then we've also seen like an increase in people actually signing up um, which is um, rare for, for for streaming services uh, to grow during during periods of, uh, of like economic um, uh, uh, you know, downturn, uh, but it just sort of like signaled that people just need, needed things to do. But the way we're seeing people listening is is somewhat different. Um, and so we're seeing more signs that indicate that people tend to be listening together. Um, so a lot more people are listening via like, you know, the TV or like even via like the Xbox or which sort of like signals more that people are listening in like a you know, living room environment, um, less so than just like on their on their phones listening alone. Um, so exactly, I think to to Ayapa's point, I think about um, you know creating a deeper connection. Something that we're seeing is artists that are taking advantage of tools that are more about you know storytelling on Spotify. Like, do you have like a bio that's fully fill, filled out? Are you using Canvas to show like images? Um, like, we're seeing that actually have like an even bigger effect because and this is just a hypothesis, but like. Um, it may be that two people are actually listening and like maybe they want to have a conversation about what they're hearing and are you giving them enough, uh, you know, in order to actually have that conversation. So it goes more beyond just, oh, who's this? Um, and then into tell me more about them. Um, but that's kind of what we're seeing in general, not totally specific to folk, um, but we're seeing people listening more um, and showing signs of listening together. Are you all finding that listening now is quite a, you know, it's pretty much agnostic, like folks aren't necessarily staying in genre lanes and, you know, that there's just as highly like, you know, so um, one of the big things, again, I had like beat the TikTok thing uh, into the ground, but, <laughs> um, but I, I'm, I've just become a really big fan and how that all drives consumption on streaming platforms like Spotify and Apple and all that. Um, but you know, just the two of us, which to me, that Grover Washington Jr. song and Bill Withers is like one of my favorite songs of all time. And to see that song take off on TikTok and then drive consumption on Spotify and Apple and all that was just, it was a really emotional moment for me. And all that stuff started because his granddaughter, you know, posted something about the fact that her granddad, you know, wrote that song. And then all, and then sort of her cohort, her demographic began consuming the music, you know, really uh, in large quantities. And then kind of found out that Will Smith did a cover or sampled the song a few years ago. And it just became this really big loop. But I don't think that would have happened. You know, I, I think even like 20 years ago, we all probably stay, if you're a rock fan, you stayed a rock fan. If you're a folk fan, you kind of stayed a folk fan. 
And if you're a pop fan, you said, you know, like there was a lot of this sort of demarcation lines across genres. And so, and now I'm finding that consumption just happens across genres. And in some ways, for someone like me, who's like working with artists of, from different genres, it's great. And then other times it presents a challenge because we're also trying to figure out how to get consumption to happen on platforms like Spotify, which up to a point are agnostic. And then you become this thing about what your historical consumption has been in the platform. And so if you've been a historical Christian artist trying to port you over to pop or trying to port you over to a different genre is really, really difficult. And, and so I'm really encouraged with the way consumption is happening because now I don't have to depend on, oh, how do we port this thing over? I can just rely again on the audience telling me what they like or don't like, and then leveraging that information to kind of market. I think it's interesting too, if consumption shifts, how much that is an influencer. Cause I've also heard yeah. that. I mean, we've I've had artists where they want to put out an instrumental record and, the, and all of the rest of their music is singer songwriter and, and they don't know if they have to create a whole other persona in Spotify so as to not throw off their algorithm. And, That's right. and yet That's right. we're hearing conversations in the earlier today streaming panel that's sort of about how that's actually rewarded in ways now. And I'm, I'm, I think that's a really important thing to bring up in this forum of, of what, are you all seeing a shift there or, or is that an area where it still needs to catch up? Comfortable, comfortable silence. Um, well, we can take that into breakouts. Let's let's actually let's actually get set up for break breakouts. So. Mm. <laughs> Welcome back. This is frustrating. I, I didn't get Charles's information. Welcome back, Charles. my friends. We are all still here. We're all still here. Um, I want to thank you all. I know uh, there's a few more things to talk about. We're going to read back from your groups in brief quickly. Um, but I also know that some folks, have, there were some, you know, technical challenges as always with these new, trying new things. So thank you for your patience. I just want to say that as a blanket message. I know a couple breakout groups um, may have had some issues and it took a little while for some folks to get to groups. I appreciate you. So let's quickly have a little read back um, any, any top level, you can do this in the chat as well, since we only have a few moments for sharebacks, but um, certainly share contact information if you need to, recognizing that if you speak aloud right now, you're being recorded and that will appear in the recording for this session. Um, if you would like to do, what, 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 what did we learn? What, what, what uh, aha moments? Maybe our, our moderators, uh, facilitators, incredible speakers, generous humans, what uh, would you say in a one minute recap here? Uh, Charles talked about uh, something called chartmetric.com. That's kind of an aggregate of all of your, all of your various social media platforms, a way to track data across all of them at once. And toneden.com, which helps make advertising for all those platforms. And he also talked about the three C's of consistency, compelling content and community, and that you have to generate daily content on TikTok, which blew my mind. That's a lot of content. Excellent, that's a great recap. Quillen, it's also a cool name. Um, so in terms of content, stockpile content. Don't, don't depend on creating content every day. Pick a day, pick a content day, stockpile content, spend like two, three hours just, you know, <laughs> just just archive that stuff and you know have it ready to go during the week because uh, if you try to do this every day you're going to drive yourself nuts so hey michelle um this one comment is is it we kind of ended abruptly when we went back to you yeah um, and um so we, and i did not get through all my slides sure. so i didn't time out exactly so it, it get, will you be sharing my slides with the group we can make those um, available. I'll find out how to do that. I believe that I'm able to put a file. Are you comfortable with that file being downloadable, Scott? Sure. And, and I will just, add, what I'll do is after this session, I'll add that file under files in this, re if you go to this session on Folk Unlocked, it will be in files. There's a tab there to click on that. So we'll do that. 
Um, sorry, go ahead, Scott. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no. I, um, I just wanted to say, because a lot of people were writing me separately while you were talking, hey, like, did we even see the whole presentation and can we get it? So I just, that's, I just want to jump out and say that. So. so I will do that. I'll put that file under there after we wrap. The other thing to know is in Folk Unlocked, you can send messages to other attendees. It doesn't mean that everybody is using that feature. Um, but if you'd like to contact someone who's who you and you don't get their contact information before we close this meeting room, um, if you look them up under people in Folk Unlocked, you can send a message in the system to them and and I will leave it to you whether you want to share contact information or things like that. Um, but hopefully if we end abruptly even here that there's still that option to contact people if you need to. Uh, Michelle, is there a central place beyond the the, the sort of the messaging uh, platform inside Pathable um, where people can just go look up what our contact info is? Because I know this chat thing is temporary. Whatever information you make public um, in your profile. I love that, first of all, I love that in the data <laughs> panel, everyone at the end is like, how do we get in touch with each other after? Um, That's data. So if you if you can update your own profile and give as much or li as little information as you wish um, based on your privacy preferences and and um, and if anyone you know needs help I'm programming at folk.org if, if that's a challenge so programming at folk.org I'm willing to share and I'll do what I can um, just recognizing that some folks love their contact information to be shared and some folks prefer to get to know you better first. How's that for human nature? There you go. Um, I am just glowing looking at all your faces. So I'm getting t thoroughly distracted. I'm like, oh my gosh, Jonathan Bird, let's talk about data. Um, so one more final thought from a breakout. Do we have a final thought from, um, from Brittany, your room or from Charlton's room or Ayapa's room? This is like, this is like, romper room and I see Ayapa and I see Brittany. Um, any final thoughts from our speakers? We just kind of uh, hammered home how data literacy helps you from being um, getting bullshitted by other people who want to like give you money, especially when if you don't know what your content is worth because you don't know the data. Um, so that's why I'm always an advocate of like know your own data, know essentially like that you own it and um, it definitely helps you in all situations. Yeah, and in our room, um, the we were able to focus on how you use different pieces of data at different parts of uh, the release strategy. So during a time of live streams and quarantine, what are you doing to capture the information of those who are tuning into you so that you can connect with them once you're ready to release music that you know might not be live stream based or recorded based and make sure that you're asking folks how do you um, hear about my music on your website make sure as long as right next to where you have your newsletter to sign up for your newsletter that you should be doing on a regular basis um, how did you find out about this about my music is a great question so you know what is it that's driving them to what your music is all about Any final thought? For Robert? I don't know. This is closer <clears throat> to say, but can we do a follow up? Hmm. <laughs> I Michelle love, just no. reached through Let the screen and punched me out. never ending panel because this is the follow up to the follow up. I, I it, It's totally okay to say because there's no question there will be follow up. Like, we need to continue. This is. Some of the most confusing. I was watching the streaming panel earlier today, and I'm just like one of the streaming panels, and I just heard the flood of overwhelmed artists in the feedback loop. Even after hearing a lot of great information, which it was really great, I know that everyone's overwhelmed with data. So there's no question we'll continue to do programming around data. Um, Charlton, I saw that you unmuted. Do you want to give a final thought? <laughs> Hey, I was I was honestly gonna think of it. I was trying to it was more okay. of a <laughs> on mute. Uh, and I was hoping that maybe the thoughts would appear uh, <laughs> by the time you called on me. Um, but I don't know, my final thought is just like thank you <laughs> uh, for, for coming and for paying attention. I guess the last thing I was just gonna say was like um 
Uh, no, actually, I have no. My my brain is empty at the That's, moment. You're, 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 this is great. It's the, the whole thing is <laughs> totally disorienting and awesome. Um, I I can't even see if Robert is still here. Yeah, that. yeah, I'm here. I was just <laughs> gonna say, uh, before you can interpret data, make sure you have access to all these different platforms that allow you to have the data that you're looking at. You know, somebody asked on our on our breakout about Amazon's platform, and um, it occurred to me maybe not everybody's even familiar that that exists right now. So you know, these services are making these platforms available to you and, and you wanna make sure that you've, you've armed yourself with as much access and information as you can. And then, you know, worrying about how to interpret that and build a, a strategy will come later, but, um, you know, do the digging, do the research, build a profile and then, and then interpret. So much, Robert. Um, thank you all of our speakers all of you participating today this is um you know i am made i'm made emotional about data every day but i'm made emotional today because i think a huge part of this is you know is making use of what we have access to of of um demystifying and making it all less um overwhelming and 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 the only way we can do that is, is to share what we know. And this is an incredible showing of sharing what y'all know. So thank you for that. Thank you, Brittany, Charlton, Ayapa, Charles, Scott, and Robert. Um, you know, once this session has been edited, this main room will be, the recording will be made available on Folk Unlocked on the platform all week. The breakout rooms, again, were not recorded. Um, please take a moment to provide feedback about today's conversation in the chat. You can also later, if you want to be sharing more information outside this Zoom, the chat will be available on Folk Unlocked also. Um, and certainly folks who may be watching this may also love to interact with all of you who have been a part of this incredible session. Um, finally, Folk Unlocked is made available at a pay what you can price, as you all know. Um, so um, that is in part from the uh, generosity of donors. So um, if you have the means to do so and you would like to support um, Folk Alliance and the work that we're doing, you can do that at folk.org slash donate. And I think by now, during these announcements, you may have privately shared inf contact information with whoever you need to, um, but we'll sit tight for a few moments. But I, I do just want to thank you all. This is a, a daunting topic to unpack together. And this is just the beginning of a conversation. Like I'm saying, all these panels and workshops, we're trying to start the conversations. Not always, we can't always have the whole conversation, but we can start the conversation. So I, I thank you um, for daring to talk data. Michelle, you've done an amazing job. This is like one of the best panels I've ever been on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Except oh. that I didn't introduce you, Charles. <laughs> But you know what? It was a fun little accident. It worked out for me, I can't say. We do. Brittany, um, congratulations on your new role and good luck. And it's thank you for coming back, all of you and, and Charlton and Charles as new speakers on this topic. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, Everyone, us. Uh, okay, Scott, I'm gonna keep hitting you up with questions, buddy. And I will follow up with you to get that file up for everybody so they can access it. Have a wonderful conference. I'll see y'all in the halls. Robert, tell the team I say hi. <laughs>